Microwave Engineering, Microwaves, A Prelude, Part 3, Bandwidth and Ballistics, Series on Microwave Engineering, Lecture Number 0, 0.00. Bandwidth is an important parameter in electrical communications. In fact, it can be considered as the single most important parameter in the entire communication engineering. The connection between bandwidth and the communications can be understood from the fact that bandwidth refers to information handling capability or information processing ability whereas communications refer to transfer of information along with processing of information there is a definition for bandwidth a commonly used definition and it is also the most general one in the sense that it is applicable to a component, to a circuit, to a device, even to a system. Not only that, there is no restriction for its applicability in frequency range. It can be applied at low frequencies, it can be applied at high frequencies, it can be applied even in medium frequencies. The definition is bandwidth is range of frequencies over which the performance is satisfactory. In this definition, as it is general one, two points required to be, two aspects are required to be elaborated further. Bandwidth refers to range of frequency. Here, the limits of the range are not given, are not specified. It implies one can fix the limits, one can give values to the limits depending upon requirements of the situation. Sometimes 3 dB points, in fact most of the times 3 dB points, they are set as limits. Sometimes 30 dB points, sometimes 1 dB points, sometimes 2 dB points. One can fix depending upon demand of the situation, context. Another aspect is regarding performance. The performance of different components or devices, they are specified by different indices. Example, directional coupler performance is indicated by directivity, whereas antenna performance is indicated by gain. If bandwidth is defined with respect to directivity, then the resultant bandwidth is directivity bandwidth of the directional coupler. Gain is considered to define bandwidth, then the resultant bandwidth is gain bandwidth of antenna. Not only that, different components, they are having, each one having more than one performance indices. Example, once again, directional coupling. Its performance is indicated by both directivity and coupling. Another example is antenna. Antenna's performance is specified gain impedance, pattern, beam width, etc. Now, bandwidth can be specified with respect to directivity. Bandwidth can be specified with respect to coupling. In such case, directional coupler can have two bandwidths, directivity bandwidth, coupling bandwidth. In case of antennas, bandwidth can be specified with respect to gain. It results in gain bandwidth of antenna. Similarly, one can have impedance bandwidth of antenna, pattern bandwidth of antenna, beam width bandwidth of antenna. So, conclusion is bandwidths of different components, different devices, they are obviously different. Not only that, a single component can have different bandwidths also. In the present session, the focus is on bandwidth and different terms that are there that are associated with bandwidth. Before conclusion, we also spend some time on electron ballistic. The functioning of microwave tubes is based on movement of electrons in electric field, in magnetic field, sometimes in both fields. Microwave tubes are oscillators generating a microwave signal. They are also amplifiers enhancing the strength of weak signal. 
with this brief introduction now we move into the core session bandwidth of a device or system is most important in electrical communications because it is this which decides their information carrying or processing capacity if the system is required to be fast then its bandwidth must be large the bandwidth gives a lot of information regarding the performance of the device component of circuit or system formally bandwidth of a device or system can be defined as the range of frequencies over which it can work satisfactorily units of bandwidth are hertz it is equal to lower cut off frequency to upper cut off frequency cut off frequencies are frequencies at which the performance of the system falls to some specified level below optimum performance the limits of the range they are called cut off frequencies the distance between the cut off frequencies then is the band sometimes particularly at light frequencies bandwidth is specified in wavelength notice recollect light is specified in wavelengths whereas microwaves are specified in frequencies in light range therefore bandwidth is specified in wavelengths in nanometer in microwaves as they are specified in frequencies bandwidth is specified in frequencies in hertz in literature bandwidth is found being expressed in a number of other ways which will be given here 3 db bandwidth 3 db bandwidth consists of two terms 3 db bandwidth bandwidth is band range of frequencies over which performance is satisfied then what is this 3 db 3 db specifies the limits it gives information pertaining to the limit limits of the range here 3 db points are the limit for a device or a system or a circuit the 3 db bandwidth is where the frequency response falls off from its highest peak by 3 db one can define 2 db 1 db 30 db etc bandwidth to now another term percentage band for a device or a system or a circuit with lower cut off frequency fl upper cut off frequency have a center frequency fs the percentage band most of the times for uh, devices and components bandwidth is specified as percentage band by definition percentage bandwidth is fh minus fl by f into 100 here the definition of 3 db bandwidth is given general this is the frequency response for most of the devices that could the response frequency response appears like this inverted u performance is peak over certain range of frequencies this range is called mid band and it falls below mid band and above mid band if the fall is 3 db at this fall there exist two points one point is on lower end another point is at upper end or higher end lower point lower end point frequency is specified by fl upper side frequency is specified by fh the distance between these two is bandwidth 3 db band as already mentioned one can define 2 db 1 db bandwidths in the same way the center frequency fs is equal to average of upper and lower cut off frequencies fh plus fl by 2 it can be easily noticed that it is possible to have more than 100% bandwidth by this definition another term we come across is octave bandwidth when the upper frequency of operation is twice that of the lower one then the bandwidth is said to be one octave consider example an amplifier that works from 4 to 8 gigahertz has one octave bandwidth 2 to 4 gigahertz amplifier also have one octave bandwidth the word octave was originated from music theory this can even be related to percentage bandwidth one octave bandwidth is equal to 67% band another term tunable band Tunable bandwidth of a system is a measure of the width of the spectrum to which the system can respond to when the user is allowed to change the setting, such as local oscillator frequency. To understand the concept, the idea behind the term tunable bandwidth, 
consider AM radio receiver. Over the front panel of the receiver, one can find a scale, frequency scale. Same scale in any country, anywhere on the globe. At one end, you can find 540 kilohertz. At the other end, it is 1600 kilohertz. Any radio transmission, AM transmission, that falls within this band. 540 to 1600 kilohertz can be received by the radio receiver. Of course, some tuning mechanism is there inside. With the help of that mechanism, one can receive any radio station, radio broadcast. So tunable bandwidth is 1 megahertz in this case. Another term, instantaneous band. It is a measure of the range of frequencies of a system can respond to when no tuning is allowed. In case of radio receiver, the instantaneous bandwidth is almost always less than the tunable bandwidth. In FM receivers, the IF bandwidth, that is the instantaneous bandwidth, is about 200 kHz, which is almost sufficient to pass the entire broadcast FM signal. In AM receivers, the instantaneous bandwidth is 10 kHz, almost 100 tunable bandwidth. The relation between tunable bandwidth and instantaneous band can be considered with the help of AM receivers. In case of AM receivers, tunable bandwidth is 540 to 1600 kilohertz. This is the total or complete bandwidth. This is bandwidth of the receiver. Now, let us suppose we are receiving a particular station, particular transmission satisfactorily. Then the receiver must have been tuned to that particular station. This is one aspect. Another aspect is the receiver must have been tuned to receive certain frequency range satisfactory. That frequency range is instantaneous band. It must be sufficient to accept the signal. Signal is associated with, with certain band. The receiver must be ready, must be having a band capable of accepting the signal. That particular bandwidth is instantaneous bandwidth. In case of AM receivers, it is 10 kilohertz. Now we enter into electron ballistic. In microwave engineering, an important area is area of study is microwave tubes. Clistron amplifiers, traveling wave tube amplifiers, or microwave amplifiers, reflex clistron oscillators, magnetron oscillators, these are oscillators. They generate microwave signals. All these devices, they are studied under the category of microwave tubes. Their functioning is based on movement of electrons, electron beam in electric fields, in magnetic fields, sometimes under the influence of both the fields. Here, certain commonly used equations or relations are given, which are useful when we go to those devices to understand their functioning. First, we consider moment of charged particle in electric field. When, field. when a particle, charged particle is in electric field, the particle experiences certain force. That force is called Coulomb force. Coulomb force is given by formula F equal to QE. F stands for force. Q charge on the charged particle. E is field intensity. When force is there on the particle, it gets acceleration. A. The product of mass and acceleration is equal to force. Therefore, F equal to QE equal to MA. From this relation, one can get the governing relations of particles in electric field. When we use Cartesian system, the relations are d square x by dt square equal to Q by M ex. Similarly, y component and z component. In case of cylindrical coordinate system, d square rho by dt square minus rho d phi by dt square equal to q by m e. So this equation involves rho component, second equation phi component, third equation z. Both the sets, their origin is f equal to q e equal to m e. Another aspect, when an electron or any other charged, charged particle is accelerated by certain voltage v not let us say v then it gets certain amount of velocity high velocity the velocity it acquires 
depends upon the amount of voltage. A particle moving with velocity is said to have energy, kinetic energy. Therefore, acceleration by voltage gives energy to the particle. The relation between them, accelerating voltage and the kinetic energy acquired the, by the particle. The relation is half m v naught square equal to E v naught. Half is half, m means mass of the particle, v naught is velocity, e is charge on the particle, v naught is accelerating voltage. From this, one can find the velocity acquired by the particle. A little bit of manipulation uses the relation 5.9 into 10 power 5 square root of infinity. This relation we encounter in case of cluster amplifiers, in case of reflex cluster oscillators, in case of magnetrons, in case of traveling wave tube, in almost all microwave tubes. Here we consider the presence of particle in electric field and a magnetic field. The particle experiences force due to electric field. It also experiences force due to magnetic field. Electric field component is QE. Magnetic field component is Q V cross B. Here Q is charge. This is a Lorentz force law. When force is there, the particle acquires acceleration. Product of acceleration and mass of the particle is force. So now we have a relation F equal to QE plus Q V cross B equal to M A. This equation can be converted into component form. This is vector equation. One can convert, one can get components, component equations. In fact, they become, they are governing equations of the particle motion in the fields. In Cartesian system, t square x by dt square, t square y by dt square, t square z by dt square. They are equal to expressions which involve ex, ey, ez, bz, bx, by. One can also consider the equation, Lorentz force law equation in cylindrical system. It gives another set of three equations, each one corresponding to one component. When a particle is introduced into a magnetic field with certain velocity, when introduction is normal to the direction of magnetic field, then the particle start rotating tracing a circle. The radius of the circle is given by this formula. We use this formula frequently. Notice the difference between the behavior of the particle in magnetic field and in electric field. In electric field, when particle is introduced or placed, then the particle movement is along the direction of the field, parallel to the field. But when particle is introduced, into a magnetic field with a certain velocity. Its movement is normal to the field. That is one aspect. Second aspect is it is not straight line. It is when electric field and a magnetic field are normal to each other in a particular region. And when a charged particle is introduced into that region, then how the particle moves? Here different cases are illustrated. Case one. This is case one. Case one is when charge is positive with electric field in positive z direction and magnetic field in positive x direction. Case two is for charge negative with electric field in positive z direction and magnetic field in positive x direction. This is case two. Case three is when charge is positive with E in positive z direction and B in negative x direction. This is case three. Case 4 is when charge is negative with the E in positive z direction and B in negative x direction. This motion is called cycloid motion. This situation we encounter in cavity magnetrons or cylindrical magnetrons. In those devices, electric field is radial, magnetic field is axial. So fields are normal to each other. Now, electrons are injected, they are emitted into this crossed field region. The motion of the electrons then can be understood easily once we have an understanding regarding cycloid motion of charged particles 
under the influence of normal fields radius of the cycloid displacement of the cycloid angular velocity center speed etc all these parameters they are dependent upon magnitudes of the fields these are some of the points which i want to share with you for right now we consider to begin with bandwidth its importance or its significance in communication engineering its general definition various terms that are associated with bandwidth followed by an elaborate discussion then a brief on electron ballistics is given hope you have a beautiful wonderful successful fruitful and enriching learning experience enough for now see you bye bye